I'd like to call the December Cosin City School Board meeting to order. Uh, first up, Kelly, would you please introduce who is going to be doing the Pledge of Allegiance in the inspirational reading tonight? Brent Snap will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. He is a fifth grader in Miss Galletley's class. Brent is an SCA officer this year at Pocosin Elementary School. He loves to play sports, with baseball being his favorite. In his free time, he likes to listen to pop music. He is currently reading the book Behind Enemy Lines, which he bought at the PES Book Fair last week. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Olivia Barefoot is also in Ms. Galletley's class and an SCA officer at PES. She is a cheerleader for the Bulls and fame. Her favorite time of the year is Christmas because she loves it when her family is all together for the holidays. She will be reading a poem entitled Christmas. Christmas. Christmas is a time of joy for every little girl and boy. Bright colors and tinsel adorn, a tree glistening bright for all to see. Dreams of Santa and lots of snow, excited faces all aglow, reindeer flying across the sky, the stars twinkling as they pass by. Stockings hung up by the fire, while carols ring out from heavenly choir. This is what Christmas means to me while I sit by my Christmas tree. Okay, thank you, Brent and Olivia, that was nice. Uh, next is going to be our student presentations, and students will be discussing their experiences as part of the Bacosan Elementary School Environmental and Ecology Club. Topics will include the outdoor classroom, PES bluebird boxes, and the Chesapeake Experience kayaking trip. Ms. Desiree Flynn, third grade special education teacher at Pocosin Elementary School, will also be discussing information about a mini grant that was awarded from the Hampton Roads Planning District. This grant will fund materials for composting components that will be set up on a movable station so that it can be used with the third grade soil and composting unit. The students presenting are Jasmine Torrenti, fourth grader, and Jared Moses and Caleb Bell, both fifth graders. Um, hello, good evening everyone. Thanks for having us here. Um, it's my pleasure tonight to bring three of my top students from the Environmental Club who have demonstrated um, environmental excellence, excellence and have, these students are always the first ones to volunteer to help or the first ones to pick things up and put things and getting everything rolling. Um, so that's why they were chosen. And as you can see, this is a picture of the, on the first slide here of last, <coughs> last year's kayaking trip from the Chesapeake Experience. And all three of these students um, are with us again for the second year at, with the Environment and Ecology Club. Um, our objectives and a purpose purposes for the Environmental Club are for students to gain an understanding of, of their environment and our school and, and Pocosin. Um, we also, to help them protect, preserve wildlife. And also um, to lessen the negative impact on the environment, to provide a service to our community, and just to get out of the classroom and get dirty, <laughs> which is our favorite. Um, some of the student projects having, that, that are included are maintaining the Pocosin Butterfly Garden. The, the garden was constructed as a Eagle Scout project by Lee Organsky, and it was constructed not this past summer, but the following 2009-2010 school year. Um, and the, let's go. So we call the garden Camblin's Island of Butterflies. Um, 
And again, I said it was, it was a scout project in the honor. We, we named it in honor of Pam Camlin. That was the year that she had retired. Um, actually, I want to go back to that. Um, Ms. Camlin couldn't be here tonight, but she has really helped to head, head this club. And she's always with us every Monday, or every other Monday. Um, and our bluebird boxes. Jared, do you want to start? Um, we clean the bird boxes. We observe the birds. Building the nest, laying the eggs. Types of birds that make the nests are chickadees and bluebirds. Chickadees make the, a nest using moss and other soft materials, and bluebirds make their nest using pine needles and twigs. One of the things that we have observed in the bluebird boxes is, as you can see, feathers and bluebird eggs and once we saw a chickadee flying out of the bluebird box and if, if you look closely in the left picture that's actually a chickadee in the in the nest so this is what we observed one afternoon so. uh, this is the Chesapeake experience we get to go kayaking on the York River we observe the wildlife like ospreys, eagles, kill, kill deer, great blue heron, and crabs. We also go crabbing and collect data of the crabs. Our guests. Some of our guest speakers are Mr. Pl Clyde, the bug guy. He brought his zoo and showed us all his critters. Captain Compost, he... Vermiculture right and worms. Brought, his, brought worms and discussed, com and discussed composting. Newport News Bluebird Association. Bluebird boxes and bird watching, observed and listening for birds. Barbara Dunbar, York County, learned about parts of a tree. Community volunteers, Miss Trinity aided with a craft project. Um, Miss Camblin is one that helped set up all the community volunteers and guest speakers that came and helped um, <coughs> present for the kids. We, we do a lot of hands-on things. Um, and then this year, um, myself and Miss Camlin wrote a grant from the the hrgreen.org, and so it's, a, it's from the Hampton Roads Planning District, and we wrote a grant. Then um, we were awarded three hundred and sixty dollars, and so that third grade is a soil SOL where they talk about composting and decomposing. And we are going to be creating, the Environment Club is going to be creating, we're going to be ordering um, a composting bucket so that we can have it on wheels inside the third grade pod. And it will be able to move around from each of the classes so the kids actually have hands-on experience with worms. And then we'll be able to use um, all the good stuff from the worms and add them into our garden. So we'll be incorporating that. And that's the end. But before we end, um, I just wanted all three of them to talk about one of their favorite experiences about the Environment Club. So Caleb, you can go first. One of my favorite experiences is going on the kayaking trip and going <coughs> crabbing because you get to get wet and you get to see like lots of exciting wildlife. He took mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like checking the blooper boxes because you never really know what you're going to find. And my favorite experience is just working with the kids, getting out of the classroom and getting dirty. So, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Flynn, and thank you, students. Uh, if y'all could hang around for just about five more minutes, the board members would like to come out and meet each of you and ask you maybe a couple of questions about your experiences. So we're, we're almost towards break time, okay? So hang tight. Uh, next, we're going to have, I'm sorry, let's see, additions and or modifications to the agenda. Dr. Parrish, do we have any? We have none this evening. Okay, and now we're going to move into recognitions. Dr. Parrish. Thank you. While Mr. Carter moves to the floor, I'd like to first um, introduce Tyler Thibodeau. If he could come forward, please. What we're recognizing this evening are two of our students who um, have been commended by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation, and the, they're commended because of their high scores on the PSAT, which demonstrate outstanding achievement and exceptional academic promise. So we have here with us first Tyler Thibodeau. Tyler has a great love for building things, especially mechanical things. In addition to building in his spare time, he enjoys working on antique automobiles. He has rebuilt motors and added accessories designed to help the old cars meet more modern safety and structural standards. And he can weld everything metal to the car. He has also built a Van de Graaff generator, Sterling engine, and various airplane and ship models with the generator gun and engine being built from scratch. His deep interest in building all things mechanical is leading him toward a career in mechanical engineering, and he hopes to attend the Rose Holman Institute of Technology to pursue this dream. Please join me in congratulating Tyler this evening for being a National Merit Commended student. Next, if Travis Moore could please come forward. Travis is a member of the National Honor Society, Math Honor Society, and Spanish Honor Society. He participates in community activities through membership in the Leo Club and his church, where he participates in mission trips and by coaching upward basketball. He currently participates in cross-country and track year-round and hopes to continue running long after high school. He plans to study engineering at the University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, or Louisiana State University and would like to work for NASA or a private contractor after college. Please join me in congratulating Travis Moore for being a Merit Scholar Commended Student. This time we'll take a short break.
Okay. Um, Dr. Cataldo. He's, yeah, he's, All right, we will move now into presentations and reports. And first up is uh, we're going to hear from WHRO, and that's going to be Mr. Brian Callahan, Director of Education, WHRO. Mr. Callahan. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Superintendent Parrish, thanks for allowing us some time on your agenda this evening. Uh, Bert Schmidt, our CEO and president, uh, sends his regrets. He's, he was unable to be here tonight. He uh, got ill this afternoon. Uh, he enjoys coming out here, so I know he misses this terribly. We only get out here every couple of years. Uh, as you may know, uh, WHRO is actually owned by 18 public school divisions in southeastern Virginia, including Pocosin, and that's a unique relationship in the country. Uh, we come out every uh, two years and report on our activities for the previous year. And I trust that all of you have uh, this report in front of you that I'm going to go through it quickly highlight a couple of things uh, But before I get started you need to know that uh, in addition to all the education services uh, We are also your uh, public TV uh, PBS and NPR affiliates uh, to date We actually have now four television stations and we have uh, seven radio stations uh, Won't talk a lot about those uh, but uh, suffice it to say that we're expanding our radio Radio coverage so that you uh, can get our signals up there even better than you've been able to get them in the past. I think what you're really interested in is what we do in terms of education. It's a full third of our uh, uh, business, and most, most folks don't know a lot about it. That's why we come and report to you. Um, before I go too much farther, I'd like to acknowledge uh, all of the Pocosin representatives, uh, your active participation in all of our various boards and uh, services is very valuable to us, keeps us on track, uh, providing the kinds of services that you uh, really need and desire each year. And uh, uh, Vice Chair Sidner uh, is our current uh, Educational Advisory Council rep. That's our uh, school board representatives. She meets regularly with us. Uh, Dr. Parrish comes and is a voice, strong voice for the region, uh, particularly for the smaller school division. She participates in everything. Um, specifically online. Uh, that's one of the big things that she's really into. Um, and uh, Linda Rivia uh, comes in. She's our uh, current vice chair of our Technology Advisory Council. And Joe Cochlemilio, which I think I got that right. Uh, I've been working with Joe for many years. He's the chair of our regional school contract planning committee. And uh, it's their leadership uh, from small school division with so many leaders uh, that's invaluable to us. Now, uh, if I can turn your attention to the uh, actual report. If you look at page Page two, uh, item number two. Uh, one of the things that you make a great deal of use of is uh, Virtual Virginia Advanced Placement and World Languages School. Um, there are about 40 uh, World Language courses, Advanced Placement courses, and uh, 36 Pocosin uh, high school students registered for those courses last year. Uh, that's got to be one of the largest amounts per school size in the entire Commonwealth. Uh, number three uh, is also another uh, learning. Uh, virtual Learning Center. It's called the Hampton Roads Virtual Learning Center. Uh, since 2007, we've been uh, developing online courses uh, for all of our 18 owner members. We basically uh, collect monies for those, uh, either through grants or direct funding. We create the courses one time. We turn them back over to you and all of the other 17 owner members, and you can do what you would like with them. As online learning becomes more important, uh, this becomes another piece to the puzzle. We've also got some relationships on how to share courses among the school divisions that are our owner members. So if a student in Pocosin would like to take something from Virginia Beach or Virginia Beach student would like to take a Pocosin course. There are uh, memorandums of understanding in place to do that. And uh, the Virginia Beach City Schools just recently released an RFP to allow you to purchase from commercial providers. So you have a lot of options in that area. But it's important to know that you own these courses. These courses allow you to uh, run uh, any students you would like, homeschool, uh, private school, whatever, through your own schoolers, through your courses using your teachers. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. You don't have to just go with a commercial option. Uh, also, uh, over on page three, I'd like to point out item number seven, the Great Computer Challenge. We've been doing that for 26 years now. We actually have uh, children of past participants participating, and uh, your participation uh, was particularly impressive this year. You had four teams participate in the lower school, and all four of them walked away with something. You have a first place, a second place, a third place, and an honorable mention in each one of those. That, I don't think we've had any other school division that had all of their teams have any kind of a place. 
Um, page four, uh, top of the page, uh, we also provide digital media on demand services. You may have heard of digital or uh, discovery education streaming. Uh, we've been providing that for almost 10 years under a business relationship with discovery. It's the number one service that we provide to educators in the region and honestly it's probably the number one service that public media provides uh, in the state of the, uh, in, in Virginia. And uh, your folks uh, 4,500 times access the service to use those digital objects in the classroom. Right below it uh, is another one, uh, is Virginia's Community of Anytime Knowledge, another online teacher training initiative. It's item number five. And you also had nine teachers last year participate that as well. Those are 15, 30, 45 hour uh, courses for teacher licensure, uh, recertification, or one, two, or three graduate credits from uh, James Madison University. Uh, turning to page five, Tech Trek and Tech Trek the Next Generation is a week long uh, summer immersion in technology and uh, in the 26 years that we've been running that uh, activity as well. We almost every year get teachers saying it's the best thing that they've ever done in their lives. So it's very good that you had uh, one of your teachers participate in that as well. Uh, if I can get you to flip to page number eight, please. Um, item number two, uh, we produce a monthly show called School Talk Monthly. And uh, two of your schools were highlighted as schools of the month in that particular uh, program. Uh, in October, Pocosin Middle School was recognized. And in March, it was Pocosin Primary School. That airs on Channel 15 and also on all of the cable channels in the region, highlighting the good work that your folks are doing in that area. Um, Probably the most important page uh, being the stockholders of WHRO, uh, in essence, is page number 10. Page number 10 is your return on investment for all of the activities, uh, all the educational activities in which you participate. And quite honestly, if I could get an 87 to 1 return, I'd hire that broker in a minute. Um, it's been a particularly a good year, mostly because of the development of the online courses uh, as a region, rather than spending $100,000 or $100,000 a course to develop it. We split that up, got some money from uh, an ARRA E2T2 grant, and we're able to do those uh, on behalf of all of the 18 uh, schools in the region. And with that, I conclude my report. Um, any questions? I'd be happy to entertain anything you all have. Anybody? Thank you very much, Mr. Callahan. Thank Appreciate you very you much. Work. We'll see you again in two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is Mr. Bowen with our <clears throat> financial update. Good evening, Chairman Carter, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. Um, just a couple of items this evening in the finance update. You have in front of you uh, a copy of the comprehensive annual financial report. This is a joint report with the city and the school division. Uh, this is one of our many shared services that we have. Um, I'm not going to read the report to you this evening, but I will say if you have trouble sleeping over the holidays, this is a great read. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, point out at the last tab, the compliance section. It's page 102. This is the summary of the auditor's uh, results. And just to point out a couple of things here, um, there was an unqualified audit opinion, which is the best one can receive. There were also no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies that were noted, either in the financial reporting or in the federal program area. So uh, I just wanted to highlight those for you. This is a great audit report. And um, often then people look at the finance department and say this is a result of the finance department, but it's really not. This uh, is a result of a number of people in the organization, both with the city and the school division. So um, congratulations to everyone. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk about this evening um, is a budget update. Uh, the governor released his budget yesterday, and we received additional information from the Virginia Department of Education just today. In January, we'll be able to provide uh, specific information as to what the governor's budget means to our school division. As you know, the, the governor released his proposed uh, rate increase for VRS last week. And again, I don't have those specific details for you. Um, but it was important to note that the governor did state, he declared that this is the biggest employer contribution increase in history. So we will consider VRS a, a challenge uh, here in Pocosin. 
The governor's proposed rate increase of 11.66 percent is, is high and it's significant. However, it's not as high as the proposed rate by the, VG, by the VRS Board of Trustees. So um, although it's significant, it could have been a lot worse. And, uh, but we'll have more information. Staff will continue to um, analyze the, the budget data that's come out and we will bring forward those results to you in the coming weeks. So that's uh, my finance update this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Uh, any questions from anybody? Um, just out of curiosity, what did the Board of Trustees recommend? Do you know right offhand? Yes, the Board of Trustees rate uh, was over six, 16%. So we're looking at a 10.44% increase. Um, it was 16 plus some change. And the, what the governor uh, proposed was 11.66. Our actual increase is 533 now, that's just for VRS. There are other percentages that will also be included in that, and that's group life and our retiree health care credit. So we're looking at closer to 7% um, for total benefits uh, with, with the state. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Pappas with the operations update. <clears throat> Good evening, Chairman Carter, school board members, Dr. Parrish. Uh, in the area of operations, this is a great time for us. All the custodial and maintenance elves will get a lot done during the break. <laughs> in the area of uh, custodial services, we go through a whole regimen of deep cleaning. And each school has a process, and students will come back to shining floors just in time to bring in rock salt. <laughs> maintenance, in the area of maintenance, uh, we will be going, undergoing several projects that we can only do at this time. Um, one in particular is the uh, preventive maintenance routine for the big centrifugal chiller at the high school and the, and the evaporator that's out there. We're also doing some preventive maintenance work on the main electrical switch for that school. And then, as you know, and the board approved, uh, the gymnasium floor at the primary school will be installed. Those are some of the few activities that maintenance will be doing. In food service, um, we are spending a considerable amount of time working through the declining enrollment and the impact that that's having on our food service operation. Uh, we are meeting to reduce labor and we're moving forward to project out sales and expenses for the rest of the year. In the area of transportation, we just completed the state's required division transportation report for the 2010-2011 year. And uh, this is only a small component part of the much larger state report, uh, the annual school report, that Bill spends a considerable amount of time on. Nonetheless, our transportation <coughs> section is important. In true form, the state gave us a mandate a couple of weeks ago that we had to go back out, and we spent an entire week with every bus collecting data again. Um, that data will come in very handy next year. We had actually already done it, but then they changed the rules a little bit. Um, so that they can better define the data that they'd like to get from all the schools. And that concludes our operation report. Thank you. Questions, comments? I have uh, one question, Steve. The last month, and I noticed reading the minutes, that you uh, reported that we had completed the peaceful bus campaign. Have the buses been successfully peaceful? Yeah, and I... It, 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 they remain peaceful. <laughs> Very peaceful. Uh, we try very hard, and it's an ongoing process. We had completed one phase of it, and that was bringing in the bus drivers again this year to go through with the students and with their faculty mentors a whole host of, of, of things that the children participated in and the drivers participated in. But the Peaceful <coughs> Bus Program actually hasn't gone away. It hasn't been totally completed, just that phase. And it helps. It, it, the drivers, it gives the drivers some tips, there are certain signs that they can use that will tell the children, hey, I need you to be quiet. Um, and obviously it works really good right after the, the educational session. Uh, we go away for a break like this, we got to re-inculcate them with the knowledge. Anything else? Thank you, sir. 
Uh, next up will be the instructional update, Dr. Rivia. Good evening, Chairman Carter, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. As I was pondering what to talk about this evening, because I try to always bring kind of a snapshot of an instructional program or a series of initiatives that we're studying, I was reflecting on perhaps some of the overindulgence of our past Thanksgiving holidays and with the advent of uh, our winter break upon us and that we might be encountering some more festive banquets, I wanted to focus on our health and PE program. One of the things I want to uh, let you know is that we have very highly qualified health and PE teachers in all four of our schools, and they work diligently to promote good health, healthy lifestyles, and activities amongst all of our children. So whether we're talking about just the day in, day out exercising or skill development or um, learning a particular sports or activity, our, our health and PE teachers are constantly working with our students to get them moving and get them active and to, in, and to instill in them the appreciation for a, high, a healthy lifestyle. In addition, the instructional program extends beyond just what they're teaching in their health and PE lessons to, uh, I can think of the walkathon at the primary school, and I know we've done like the jump rope for heart at the elementary school. We've got a, a healthy intramural program that runs at the middle school, and of course we have an extensive sports program that you as a school board have encouraged, and we continue to encourage our students to be involved in as many of our students students we possibly can get involved in our sports programs, we really try to do that. So I think that in this holiday season when oftentimes we want to sit on the couch and maybe play our video games, that our health and PE teachers every day are encouraging our students to get up, to be active, and to really appreciate an active lifestyle. And I just think that uh, it was one of the uh, areas that we hadn't really talked about over the last few years, and I wanted to bring that to your attention because it is an important um, part of the instructional program. The math, the science, the reading, those are all important, but it is important for our children to be healthy, and health and PE is a big part of that. So that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Anybody? Questions, comments? I, for one, will refuse to feel guilty sitting and laying on the couch over break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming by your house and encouraging you to get out and run or something. Okay, thank you, Dr. Review. Uh, Ms. Sidner, could you walk us through the consent agenda, please? Certainly. The following items are on the consent agenda. Approval of financial reports, enclosed. Personnel action, enclosed. Authorization to dis dispose of surplus property, enclosed. And authorization to accept and expend funds received from the Department of Medical Assistance Support Services, enclosed. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? I'll move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. 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 Would you call for a vote, please, Ms. McDowell? Mr. Hux? Aye. Mr. Diggs? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion passed by a vote of six to zero. Okay, next up, other matters for consideration. Um, first on the uh, agenda is approval of the minutes of the November regular meeting and work session enclosed. Um, can I get a motion to accept that? Chairman Carter, I move that we accept the minutes for the November regular meeting and work session. Second. Second. Any discussion for the minutes? Could you please call for a vote? Mr. Hux? Aye. Mr. Diggs? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Abstain. Mr. Ms. Sidner? Abstain. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion passed by a vote of four to two abstain. Next on the agenda, consideration of approval of fiscal year 2011 capital improvements program. And Dr. Parrish, could you walk us through that, please? Certainly. As you can see up here on the screen, we have... Um, the spreadsheet that outlines the capital improvement plan. We did discuss this at length at your last work session in November. Each year we bring the capital improvement plan to you around this time of year um, because our capital improvement plan, once you approve it, will then be moved to the city and will be 
made a part of the city capital improvement plan. We'll go through the planning commission for approval and then eventually to city council. We have not made um, or proposed many changes this year to the capital improvement plan. I do want to highlight those changes that we did discuss at your meeting in November. We have added uh, more of a phase approach to the renovation of the middle school in part um, to cover trailers that we might need for students during the renovation of that building. Um, also what we've done is combine the HVAC projects for the primary school into one project which you see up here because it may make for more continuity as we uh, contend with uh, repairing or updating the HVAC programs. And then finally, a big one that you'll see here, some projects have been removed. Remember that we did have the one-time stimulus money um, that we received from the federal government almost three years ago that you as a board very wisely decided not to put in the operating budget, um, if at all possible, because once we put the one-time money in, we know that we need to cut it out. So this year we did have some of that stimulus money available to us to do capital projects because we were able to get through the budget cuts without using all of it, although as you know, we do have some of that in our operating budget this year. So you'll notice the gym floor project from the primary school, which uh, Mr. Pappas did mention will be done over the winter break, is one of your stimulus-funded projects. So we're not using operating dollars. We're using one-time stimulus money. And also on that list was repair of the tennis courts by the high school. Um, so that work will be done too as we move into spring and summer. So those are the real changes to the capital improvement plan that will be forwarded to the city upon your approval. And if any decisions are made about facilities in the coming months or year, then we'd obviously would make changes to the capital improvement plan um, and bring those forward to you. So with that said, I recommend approval as a CIP, of the CIP as presented to you this <coughs> evening. Do I have a motion to approve CIP? I'll move that we approve the, uh, approve the CIP as presented. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion or questions about CIP? Anybody sees? Anything at all? Okay. Ms. McDowell, could you call for a vote, please? Mr. Hux? Aye. Mr. Diggs? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion passed by a vote of six to zero. Uh, next up, consideration of approval of a one-time payment for a voluntary retirement incentive program. And Dr. Parrish, again, would you walk us through that, please? Yes, you have attached a reading file with a detailed explanation of the voluntary retirement incentive program that we are bringing to you this evening. As um, you are well aware of, we are anticipating the need to make deep budget cuts again this year for the fourth year in a row. We have, um, for the last couple years, offered this voluntary retirement incentive program um, to hope to help us to um, make position cuts through attrition as much as possible. As you know, each of the past few years we have had um, to-do layoffs, but by offering the voluntary retirement incentive program, we have had some of our staff retire and have simply not then filled those positions, which has helped with um, us with layoffs. So we are bringing forward to you again another voluntary retirement incentive program. Um, and this evening's program is very similar to the program that we've had in the past. Um, it, you must be VRS eligible um, and meet all the requirements for that. The only change this year is in the past uh, programs we've offered a 15% of base salary one-time payment that is paid um, prior to the end of this fiscal year. We are recommending to you this evening that we offer a one-time payment of 20% of base salary. Um, we believe because we've had so many retirements in the past that we'll see fewer this year in terms of the funding. We have, um, we are able to cover the cost of this program through personnel and other savings that we are doing during the course of this year because as you know we've been saving each of these years um, in case we do end up with mid-year cuts. So we will have the funding available for those people that do choose to take this. I am recommending tonight approval of this voluntary retirement incentive program. We will then make employees aware of it when they return in January um, and as they make decisions in January and February they'll let us know if they're going to access this program. Um, it's important that we get this information in January and February because that will be the time we'll develop developing the budget and will give us a sense of how many position cuts we can make through attrition um, and hopefully avoid layoffs if at all possible this year. So with that said, I recommend approval of the program as presented this evening. Can I get a motion to approve? Um, I'll move that we approve a, the one-time payment for a voluntary retirement incentive program as stated. Second. 
Second. Any questions? What date do they need to let you know by? Do you is that in here? I'm sorry. Yeah, we actually um, are, are allowing them to have um, more time than we normally have. We're asking that they let us know by February 17th. Now. Yeah, sorry. so Thank no, you. that's okay. In past years, we actually had an earlier date, but we found that um, <coughs> employees told us they just needed a little more time. Sometimes they need to talk to a financial advisors um, to get some real information. So um, we will obviously make them well aware of it. Um, we are letters of intent where we are requesting our employees to let us know if they're coming back next year are due to us by the end of January. But if they are considering this program, they'll be able to let us know that at the end of January and then have a couple of an additional weeks if they need to get some more advice. So that's a good question. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea how many people uh, are eligible to take advantage of this? We do. I don't have the number right here off the top of my head, but we, we, before we brought this to you, we checked to see what our eligibility was so that we would make sure that we had funding available okay. for it. Okay, great. Anything else, board? Is, I'm sorry, is 20% maybe the standard or are each school district's different? School districts will vary. Um, 15 to 20 percent seems to be pretty standard with what um, other school divisions are doing. They may, they may offer incentives in different manners. There are some school divisions that have not been offering it simply because they have not um, had to contend with the budget cuts in quite the same way we've had because we were so lean when we started. So, um, But it's certainly in line with what other school divisions do. And typically they will do the one-time payment prior to the end of the fiscal year, not carry it because we, you don't know from year to year what your budget would be. Unlike, um, I know, I believe the city actually offered a couple years ago a retirement program, but they were able to offer it over a number of years, but they're able to carry funds forward in their budget. Thank you. Anything else? Ms. McDowell, could you call for a vote, please? Mr. Hux? Aye. Mr. Diggs? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion passed by a vote of six to zero. Okay, next up is public comment. Ms. McDowell, do we have any? No, sir, there was none. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into communications and or other matters by school board and or superintendent. Dr. Parrish, could you kick us off, please? I could, and I actually am going to be short this evening. I will just remind you, as Mr. Bowen said, that in January we will have more specific information about the budget. I know in our work session we'll talk um, very briefly about it as well. Um, I do want to remind the community that on January 25th we will have a public forum um, related to budget, so we will continue to advertise that and get the date and location out, but I just want everybody to remember that that will occur that evening. And most importantly, I just want to thank everybody for all of their hard work for this first part of the school year. Um, I know everybody is ready for a break. I hope that everybody, our, our staff, our students, families, um, have a very restful and relaxing break and very happy holidays. I know when everybody comes back in January, we'll be busy and the end of the year will fly by. But um, everybody's really done a tremendous job as we've um, worked throughout the fall. And it's certainly with the budget cuts we faced over the last few years been very challenging. And, um, our staff just continue to work as hard as they can for our students, and I so appreciate that. Thank you. Kelly? Okay. So at the high school, every year, um, the students make cookies for the Langley Officers Spouses Club annual Airman's Cookie Drive. And this year, we were able to contribute 12,780 cookies. And Miss Morrison collects them in bags by two dozen, so... My class, I have a first hour, and we were the ones who had to count all the cookies, and it took a long time. So, um, But the cookies were handed out to all the airmen, the Langley Fire Station and Security Forces and Command Post, Langley Hospital, the, US, the USO Lounge at Patrick Henry Mall Airport, um, the NAS Norfolk, and the food banks and shelters around the area. And um, I know there's a huge thanks to give to Miss Morrison for like all the efforts she did because she's basically the main coordinator for all the schools for the drive. And um, the chorus and band, we will perform tomorrow for the whole student body at the high school um, for the half day. So it's like a treat for the students before they go on the break. Um, at the middle school, Miss Everly and Miss Powell put on amazing band and chorus performances in the past two weeks. My little sister is in the chorus and I went to go see their Christmas play and their chorus concert, and Miss Everly's doing a fantastic job with that. 
and they are going to have a New Year's <coughs> holiday dance Friday, January 6th when they return from the break. Um, at the elementary school, like our student um, presentations um, mentioned, Mr. Clyde Marsteller, or the Bug Man, visited students with his collection of reptiles, amphibians, insects, shells, and plants. Um, he wanted to show the students examples of the nature and like wildlife around in the area, and he wanted to instill in them a sense of stewardship for the environment. And then students from Miss Pappas's fourth grade class participated in the second annual Bullies Are Bad poster exhibit at the Children's, Children's Museum in Richmond. Um, the recognition ceremony for that is January 28th, so best of luck for all those who entered in that. And at the primary school last Friday, the kindergartners had their holiday program, which I know was a big hit, um, I've heard. And the PHS Teacher Cadet Program um, came and visited this past week, and they plan to start working at the first of the year for eight to nine weeks with an assigned teacher. And then I know for all the schools, they did um, different like fundraisers for Toys for Tots. And this is the 22nd year that we've participated in it. And the middle school raised $500 for that, and the primary school raised $1,420 for that. So. That was a good turnout. Great, thank you. Ms. Tux? Public comment, sir? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Mr. Diggs? I'd just like to say to our, uh, our teachers and staff to enjoy the, uh, the downtime coming up, except for Mr. Pappas and his elves. <laughs> and they will be very busy taking advantage of the, <clears throat> the empty schools, but. Uh, Oftentimes in uh, my conversations with people, they ask me about Pocosin, you know, what's it like being in a small town? And uh, usually the first thing I say is uh, the school system's incredible, and it's uh, really because of the teachers and the staff. And uh, just uh, want to wish you all, all a very uh, Merry Christmas and uh, enjoy your, your time with family and friends. Thank you. Mr. Mill. I always wonder what I'm going to speak about before I come. And tonight on the news, it wasn't too good for some schools over in Norfolk and some other areas. And I'm just really grateful that our students treat our buildings better and treat each other with more respect. And I'd like to thank our students today for the things that they do. Uh, really proud of them. And I'd like uh, all of our students to be ready to come back and learn hard in January. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Cast. I'd like to, to thank Chairman Carter and uh, Dr. Parrish for the, the great welcome and the great orientations by the staff and, and, and thank you in advance for your patience. Um, and also I'd like to wish the, all the, the wonderful students, teachers, principals, and administrators a very, very happy holidays. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sid. Yes, I'd like to thank uh, Brian Callahan for coming out and giving us uh, our our or every other year report and I would also like to uh, thank City Council for meeting with us earlier this month um, I think it was a very good meeting um, a lot of woes financial woes for both the school and City Council but um, I appreciate them listening and their um, thoughtful questions and the thoughtful discussions that we had and I hope everybody has a very happy holiday thank you and uh, Ms. Sinner's right board did meet with city council and I think it's important that the public uh, understands that and they also need to know that they are just as dedicated to maintaining the quality of uh, Cosin schools as the board is and as the teachers are and as the st uh, school board staff is uh, they understand the situation that we're in and they're willing to support us and we really appreciate them coming out and, and meeting with us um, I had the opportunity to attend the Special Education Advisory Committee meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, Ms. Feldman, we had 18 people in attendance. Have you ever had that many before? Oh, that's a I thought so. <laughs> I thought we were going to run out of seats, but it was really great to see that many people come out and um, take advantage of, of what you put together over there, and I really appreciate that. And. Uh, being on the trailing edge of the technology, um, just all the innovations that are coming out, 
I figured the iPad was just another gimmick, you know, just a money raiser and a toy for the kids. But the presentation was about how uh, the utilization of the iPad in the classroom, and I was blown away at, at the abilities that the iPad had and how innovative teachers can be in utilizing that. And it gave me a new appreciation for just what some of the technology can do in the classroom and how effective it can be. But Ms. Feldman, I appreciate you helping organize that and getting that together. I thought it was, it was fantastic. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful break. Please be safe, um, enjoy it, rest, and have a happy holiday and come back ready to work, as Mr. Milton says. And at this time, uh, is there any other material for board review? No, there are none. Thank you. And we will adjourn and go to our work session. Everybody have a great holiday.